a very warm welcome to Daily Dispatch powered by HSBC. I'm Priya Sheth and here's our news roundup for the day. In the second week of the FinTech Open Summit hosted by the Niti Aayog in collaboration with PhonePay, AWS and EY, Dr. Pramod Verma from Ekstep and Dilip Asbe from NPCI came together for a panel discussion moderated by PhonePay's Rahul Chari to share insights on the digital economy, architecture and the overall cruciality of an empowered digital ecosystem. Stay tuned for more. A very warm welcome to Daily Dispatch powered by HSBC. I'm Priya Shet and joining us on this very interesting discussion is Vivek Sundar from QMath. Thank you very much, Vivek, for joining us today. I want to talk about the last couple of months. Uh, the edtech space has clearly boomed. We've seen so many new entrants. We've seen existing players scale up and grow rapidly. So tell us a little bit about how the last couple of min- months have been for you in terms of the kind of growth momentum that you've seen. Sure. Um, first of all, thank you for having me, Priya. It's a pleasure to be here. I've been following your story for a while, so this is a familiar channel, as it were. Um, so you spoke about the last couple of months. Um, I want to sort of maybe roll a little bit back, Priya, to the start of the pandemic, because that's when the whole online boom really took off, where consumers were sort of, in a sense, forced to stay at home because of the terrible first phase of the pandemic, where very little was known. Um, back then, our business was barely um, international. Um, I mean, we had 90 plus percent of our business in the country, logically so, because of course, that's where our home market was. We started in Delhi, and then we expanded to the rest of the country. Uh, but in the last couple of years, our business has actually moved from being an India-only business to a majorly India business to a situation today where today we are a majorly international business. Over 65 percent of our business is international. It's uh, across 50 different countries. Um, Of course, it has a lot of the Torah Indians, but also today it has a lot of other these, which just tells you something about the uh, universality of math education, number one, and number two, about the the strong word of mouth that we actually have in many of the countries. In most of the countries, we don't actually have marketing on the ground, right? So how have we spread? It's really about the fact that consumers are saying, look, you know, uh, there is very good quality education now accessible um, to to our kids. And as a result, 50 plus countries are using QMath today. And uh, the sum total of students who've ever used us is over 200,000. And it's amazing for us to just see how that has grown. The last couple of months has seen a further growth in that to the question you had asked. Uh, but I think it's very, very firmly here for us to say that we are now an international company. And therefore, we need to think a little bit about how do we behave? How do we create the product? How do we make sure that our organization is structured to deal with this fact that we are now a primarily international business? Right. Uh, thanks for that, Vivek. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit about how 2022 looks like the company in terms of what your blueprint looks like uh, uh, and the growth roadmap. So, so tell us, uh, you know, what would be the key pillars of growth uh, for you going forward? Sure. Um, so going, carrying, carrying on from the momentum of 2021 and before, uh, we will continue to expand to more countries. We are expecting to cross the 100 country um, milestone in 2022, which is a nice milestone to say that you're in over 100 countries. Very few Indian multinationals uh, actually exist. Direct to consumer Indian multinationals exist. Um, so that's one milestone, which is continued international expansion. I think there's a couple of other um, exciting stuff that we are expecting to have. Uh, we are actually la- uh, launched and will be continuing to focus on uh, a product that actually delivers wins on four fronts. Like today's product basically focuses on giving great conceptual clarity on math, which is of course what parents love about us. But as we speak to consumers, one of the things we have realized is that they're looking for something more and actually our teachers are providing that. So we want to actually formalize it and make those four things happen. And those four things are the number one, of course, the core being great conceptual clarity on math, right? I mean, that happens to be our history and legacy, and that's something which consumers love about us. The second part of it is uh, we have obviously a lot of time-stressed, time-starved parents who would love for our teachers to also help out on things other than just core, core maths, which could be things at school. Like, you know, there is a test at school, help my child prepare for it. There is a uh, competition at school, help my child prepare for it. So we want to stand for everything math. And therefore we are not just saying we'll produce 
uh, great content for learning the concepts of maths. The third part is there's a lot of international competitions that are there, like your classic international maths Olympiad. The number of students and parents that actually say, we think our child is gifted and with some coaching and some nudging, he, can, he or she can do really well at International Maths Olympiad is not small. So today we basically produce it as a sort of a nice to have, but tomorrow we want to make it a part of the core offering that we will help your child prepare for these sort of uh, interesting exams uh, that are there outside of school, right? International Maths Olympiad is, is international. And the fourth one is something which is uniquely maths. Uh, and there is, a, there is a term, I don't know if you've heard of it, Priya, uh, which is essentially called math anxiety. I mean, it thing. I mean, you, you know, despite the fact that I personally like geography and history, there isn't, nobody really suffers from geography anxiety or, or, or history anxiety, right? Uh, whereas there is a thing called math anxiety. It's a recognized term in the US and many other countries. And we believe that by tying up with great child psychologists, as well as the innate knowledge that our pedagogue and our teachers have, we can actually help so-called cure this disease because it's a perfectly curable disease and our belief is not one child in the world needs to have math anxiety. It's just there because it's taught in such a bad manner that even people who have the ability to actually, you know, like maths and not be afraid of it, end up basically hating it or end up basically fearing it. I think it's just wrong for the world to have such a fear of the subject when it's actually such a fascinating subject. Something that's universally uh, useful for everybody. I mean, you're a journalist, but you're a business journalist, and it'll be useful for you to also know how, let's say, a, a financial maths works, right? Because you're obviously covering the stories and you're also covering the numbers. So we think that maths is there in every single field of life, and therefore making it a life skill and making sure that the world has less math anxiety is our contribution towards the world. Right. Uh, Vivek, I believe that a couple of months ago, uh, you raised uh, some money, $100 million. Tell us a little bit about uh, what the plan is going forward uh, in terms of deployment, in terms of, uh, you know, overall, because we have an aggressive growth uh, plan out there. So tell us a little bit about how funds are going to be utilized. Sure. So our last fundraise, uh, Priya, was actually uh, a year ago. That was the formal fundraise that we actually did. And obviously that funds were deployed into international expansion as well as um, a bit around the product. Um, we are right now in the middle of a fundraise. We haven't, we haven't actually completed the fundraise. So what you're referring to is essentially the news that was floating around of us being in the fundraise uh, race. Uh, three, real, three simple areas where the money is going to be deployed. Number one, talent. We are actually going to have talent that is truly global in nature. And it's going to be based not just in India, because if this is an international company, this is a consumer facing company, we better have good quality talent that's basically handling the unique nuances of those, of those countries. So that's one. Second is technology. We are quite excited with pedagogy 3.0, as we are calling it, where we are actually changing the way the, the product itself works. I mean, we already have a consumer loved product. We think that infusing a bit of AI ML into it so that the consumer feels that this product sort of, you know, it's, bit, it's a bit like having a jeans, which basically has got a little elastic in it. I mean, it's jeans is all amazing, but you put a little elastic and it's just even more amazing because it perfectly fits you. Uh, our AI ML is going to be that. It's essentially going to um, expansion of customers. Uh, obviously, we are uh, competing uh, with not just Indian players, but global players. Uh, in fact, we are comp competing in the US with a lot of legacy players who've been doing math, et cetera. So to, how do we make sure that we create a fantastic brand that consumers around the world know and trust is the third area where the funds are going to be deployed. A final question before I let you go, Vivek, on the revenue front, what kind of revenue targets do you have? Uh, 2025, I believe a lot of companies have set 2025 targets. So what's the short to medium term target for you? Um, so if I were to take the five-year plan, which for us is a little little beyond 2025, and we make this plan, it was um, um, it'll it'll go beyond 25. We we think we can easily be a multi-billion-dollar revenue company because the the total addressable market for our business is huge. Maths is about the most universal of after-school programs that exist. It's by the way the number one subject out of all subjects in after-school coaching. Uh, and therefore, it's a very deep and wide subject. It's something which is very universal. The way math is taught in Kazakhstan versus Kashmir is not that different. 
um, and the way and therefore it for us to make sure that we have teachers uh, you know teaching the stuff in Srinagar and in 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 other parts of the world is something which is very uh, useful for us so given that we think a multi billion dollar business in a in 5 years is a great vision to have it's something we can easily see happening we don't even have to to basically create the market the market already exists uh, but if i take the next year or so which is a little more of a short term i think our business is easily going to be 5x where we are today dr driven in three parts really one is as i said continue to expand into newer countries we will be over 100 countries Number two is essentially get make sure that the pricing and the promotions are right. And number three, we want to make sure that our retention and essentially referral program, uh, which is really the most brilliant organic way to actually grow our business, continues to expand. So more consumers, the right kind of pricing per consumer, as well as more countries is the way we will basically be, you know, um, quintupling our business in the next year or so. And I think a quintupling business with an international flavor makes it a very attractive proposition for a lot of investors too. All right, Vivek. Uh, on that note, thanks very much for joining us today. It's really been a pleasure speaking with you and we wish you all the very best in your journey. Thanks. Mm -hmm.